Welcome back to our series, Into the Wilderness. We have been following the Israelites for some time now, so let's have a small refresher. We learned what worship looks like through stories such as the tabernacle, where God showed his people that he wanted to be with them. We learned how the Israelites fell into worshiping idols such as the golden calf, and how God is the only one deserving of our worship. And last week, we learned how the Israelites did not place their trust in God and ended up getting left out of the promised land. What do you think happened next? Find out after we worship together. You heard that, right? Stand on up. Let's lift our glorious creator together. Are you ready to play a game of Guess Who? It's simple. We're going to act like famous people and you will have to see if you can guess who we are. Let's hop into our first round to see how well you know your stuff. I have never told a lie. 
four score and seven years ago. What's up, Doc? One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. <laughs> to infinity and beyond. Which round did you find to be the hardest? Turn to a family member and tell them. Thanks for playing everyone and come back again next week for another game. Sometimes it's so easy to recognize people by their traits. Like take Abraham Lincoln, for instance. And of course we should be able to recognize Neil Armstrong. The same is true of God. We should be able to recognize him by some of his traits too. So why don't you turn to a family member and discuss, what traits does God display? some trouble with the traits, don't forget that our big idea for this series tells us who God is. Our big idea states, what is God like? God is holy, good, and loving. And these are all traits that we can know God by. He is holy, which means he is set apart, and he is good, and he is loving. So let's hear more about that through our Bible story. The Israelites did not trust God to lead them into the Promised Land. So, God made them wander in the wilderness for 40 years. God's people set up camp, but there was no water to drink. And the people complained and argued with Moses. Why did you bring us here? They asked. We will die here, and so will our animals. The people wished that they had never left Egypt. The wilderness had no grain, no fruit, and no water. So Moses and Aaron went to the tabernacle to meet with God. God told Moses and Aaron to stand in front of all the people and speak to a rock. God said that water would come out of the rock. Then the people and the animals would have water to drink. So Moses called all the people together and he stood in front of that rock. But instead of talking to the rock, he told the group, listen up. Do we have to bring water out of this rock for you? And then Moses hit the rock twice with his staff and water poured out and the people and the animals drank. But God was angry that Moses and Aaron did not obey his instructions. They did not honor him as holy by trusting in his power. So God said that Moses and Aaron would not lead the Israelites into the promised land. Instead, God would give his people a new leader. Moses disobeyed God and did not enter the promised land. We have all disobeyed God by sinning, but God gave us his son, Jesus. Jesus always obeyed God. And when we trust in him, Jesus brings us into God's kingdom forever. Last week, we heard about how God told the Israelites the consequences of not trusting him. They had to wander the wilderness for 40 whole years. Today, we are learning about how Moses disobeyed God. As the Israelites were traveling in the wilderness, they began to get thirsty. 
And what did the Israelites do? They complained. God had done so much for the Israelites. He even led them out of slavery, but they still complained over something as silly as being thirsty. God told Moses and Aaron to stand in front of all the people and speak to a rock. But do you remember what Moses did instead? He hit the rock twice with his staff. Water poured out for the people, yet God was angry that Moses and Aaron did not obey his instructions. Instead of listening, they disobeyed God. The reality is that there are consequences for sin. Sometimes it's easy to see someone else's sin while ignoring your own, but we all have disobeyed God. One of the ways that God shows us that He is loving is that He gave His Son, Jesus. While we may sin or disobey God, when we place our trust in Jesus, we are brought back into God's kingdom forever. Well, my friends, it's time that we close together in prayer. So grab your Bibles and get ready. You can read through our story in Numbers 20, 1 through 13. It's a great reminder that even heroes of faith can fail in sin. Even so, God is faithful. After you are done reading, take some time to pray together. Pray for your school and teachers. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to pause the video to keep the prayer topics up. We'll see you again next week for another great story.